Yes. So, so what we're going to look at here is how we can actually use the force that is acting at the bottom and the force acting at the top to find out the pressure. So we can use or uh, we can find the up thrust, right, of the fluid, of the fluid, right, by subtracting the downward force from the upward upward force and we know already right this this method that we're talking about here is related to when we know the pressure meaning that i know the height that the object is in the water or in the fluid, then I can find the pressure. Also at the top of the fluid, because I know the height from the top of the fluid to where the, the object is, I can find the pressure and all of that. So this method right here is really linked to pressure. So at the end of the day, right, because this pressure at the bottom is greater, it means that the force at the bottom is going to be greater. So in essence, we're saying that our upthrust, right, in this case is going to equal to upward force minus the downward force. And of course, we know what our upward force is. Our upward force is pressure times the area, which is H2 times density times gravity, right, times the area of the box. And then now, that's the pressure, so that's the overall force. So we know, we know that um, force is equal to pressure times area. So as it relates to the downward force, that is the force that is acting at the top of the system. And the pressure related to that at the top of the system is going to be H1 density times gravity times the, uh, the area. So at the end of the day, we could simplify this. We could simplify it. I'm going to simplify it, simplify it around here. So up thrust. is equal to. So I can factor out certain things. Anybody can see what, what I could factor out in this equation right here, in these um, things? What, what could I factor out? What are common in, in both of the... No, I mean, the H's are different. The A is one of them. What else? Yeah, what else? Density. So what I just do now is to just factor out the density, factor out G, factor out A. Then now in bracket I have um, H2 minus H1. I could simplify it again to just write it as such to say that the change in height, right? Change in height times my density times my gravity times my area is equal to the up thrust. You see what I'm saying? So that is another way how we could have found out the, the up thrust. And this is when we're talking about the pressure. So if you know the pressures that, are ex that exist inside of the body of the fluid, then you can take it from this standpoint, right? So that is just the, that is one method there. So please ensure that you have done, you, you have documented that information.
No. We move on. We, we spoke about Archimedes' principle, and we must know Archimedes' principle. You understand? Let me just give you a brief history, you know, as, as it relates to how this came about. So one day, this guy, right, by the name of Archimedes, he was, you know, in his bathtub, you know, taking, <laughs> I would say, a, a bath. And, you know, he, he, when, he, when he realized, when he went into the bath, so let's imagine that the bath, this is your, the bath, or, you know, the bathtub, right? And the water in the bathtub was at this level. So when Archimedes <clears throat> went into the bath, right, he realized that the fluid was running over. You understand? So with this observation, he was able to see that. There is a force called the uptrust, right, which is inside of the body of the liquid that is causing, right, some amount of the water to be pushed out. But what, what his observation was um, linked to now was to say that the amount of uptrust that is in the water is equal to the fluid that ran out. So from that, we came up with this whole concept of how we can find the uptrust of a fluid when an object is submerged inside of it. So here it says that when a body is completely or partially submerged in a fluid, it experiences an uptrust equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. All right? So that's another method that we could have used right there and then to, to basically find out what the uptrust is. That is one method there, right? So, so at the end of the day, we're saying that the uptrust is equal to the weight of the fluid, the weight of the fluid this place all right and with this observation as well there are other things that he was able to recognize there are other things that we're going to talk about that um, eventually but this 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 method that we're talking about here is linked to what we call archimedes principle right so this is the method here that we are talking about right so let's remember that and of course we know that weight is equal to mass of the fluid of the fluid right times gravity no guys you see there, there, there's there's that thing here let me just say this now right um from time to time when we're doing this experiment you're going to realize that when the fluid is displaced, you're going to get a volume and not the mass. If you wanted to measure the mass, then you'd have to go through several procedures to measure the mass. And let me just show you, right? So let's imagine that we want to measure the mass of the fluid. I would have to catch the fluid in a container. Before I catch the fluid in the container, I, have to, I, I would need to know the mass of the container right so i would have to weigh that first when i weigh that i then put it where the water is going to run out into and then now allow the object to be submerged when the object is submerged the water is going to run over into the container now i have to go back now and take this container with water right the container with water right and measure that mass when you measure that mass that's not the mass of the water. That is the mass of the container and the, and the water. So to find the mass of the, the water or the fluid, you would have to subtract the mass of the container plus mass 
of fluid. I mean, they are combined in a sense. And then now minus that from the mass of the container. That is essentially what you would have needed to do if you wanted to find the mass of the fluid. Because you obviously need the mass of the fluid to find the weight of the fluid. So that is the way how you would have gone about to do it. But there's an easier way. An easier way is, is to get a container that we can use to read the volume of the water. So imagine you get in a beaker, right? Get in a beaker. You can use a beaker to measure the volume of the water that was displaced, right? So if we use a beaker and measure the volume or a measuring cylinder, imagine that this is the, the fluid and you know the measuring cylinder has uh, marks on it and the fluid is here. You read the volume. Now, this is where our knowledge of density comes into play, right? So we'd have to density, all right, all right, cool. Let's recall that density is equal to mass over volume, providing that we know the density of the fluid, guys, providing that we know the density of the fluid. I could transpose to find the mass. So mass is now equal to density of the fluid, right, times the volume of the fluid displaced. So that is if you don't have a scale. You would use this method to find the mass, basically. So we can then rewrite the equation that says weight is equal to um, mass times gravity. We can rewrite that equation. I'm going to rewrite it so you can see. So by rewriting that equation, this is what we now have. The weight of the fluid of the, the fluid displaced is now equal to, to the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid displaced times gravity constant, which is the same thing as what is equal to the obvious. Any questions for me? All right, all right. All right, good. No, guys, that was another method there, right? We could have done it another way as well, where it's still under Archimedes' principles in a sense, but what you're going to see here is that we could, we could say that the obtrus, so, so let's imagine that we have the object and we measure the mass of the object in the ear, right? By measuring the mass of the object in the ear, this mass is 7 kilograms, and we know the formula for weight. Weight of the object is going to be mass times gravity. So at the end of the day, the weight of this object is equal to 70 newtons. This is the weight of the object in here, 70 newtons. Now, when I submerge the object into the water, I realize that I'm getting a different mass, a different mass. My question is, do you think the mass actually changed in this, in this um, entire thing? Do you think the mass actually changed? Uh, you say yes, anybody else? Anybody else? 
anybody else? Uh, you said it not change. All right. Good. It, it, it doesn't change. Imagine, guys, if you go to the sea, you know, and you take a dive into the sea, is it that you weigh less than how you, than, than the way how you, you were before? Is it that you weigh less? Let me know. Think about it. You go to the sea and you truck off in the water. Right? By trucking off into the water, is it that you you know weigh less than, than how much you actually weighed out, outside of the water? Did did, did, did did your hair shrink? Did your did your did your skin get smaller? Did your foot get smaller? That, that kind of thing. Did your belly get flatter when you jump into the water? Ah, huh? no, you're still the same person, right? So what is essentially happening is that because of the uptrust in the water, remember uptrust is an upward force. So that upward force is pushing against the weight of the object coming down. And if you're pushing down, if you're pushing against the weight of the object, then what it means is that the scale is going to give you a different reading. You understand? So it's not going to give you the same reading. So what we call this is the apparent weight. And apparent means seems to be true, but not necessarily so. That's what apparent means. So this is not the real weight. It is just the weight of the object in water. And if we wanted to find the obtrust, because remember now it's the obtrust that is pushing against um the, the object right so to, to find that obtrust we would just go ahead and say all right obtrust is going to be equal to the weight of the fluid in here subtract from or subtract by the weight of the fluid in the weight of the object in the fluid so the weight of the object in fluid is going to be 40 um newton and therefore, uh, by subtracting that 40 from the 70, you get 30. So at the end of the day, we see that this is, um, this is the obtrust. But if we go back now and look at the amount of um, fluid that was displayed, the amount of fluid, if we were to measure the mass of it, we realize that it is 3 kilograms of fluid that was displaced. So at the end of the day, we're seeing that um, the weight of the fluid is going to be three kilograms times um, 10 newtons per kilogram. And in idea, we're seeing that three times 10 gives you 30. So we still match up back to being the same thing. You understand? Comprende, s'il vous plaît, comprende, estudio, comprende. Si, or no comprende. Talk to me, guys. You see what's going on here? That that all the time, all the time. I'm going to see you. All the time. That's how it's going to it's going to behave. You understand? The apparent weight is always going to be less than the weight in air, right? So the difference between the, the apparent weight and the weight in air that was going to tell you what the obtrusive. is. You see what I'm saying? Here's a question, guys. Just to just put things into perspective a little bit here. Right. I'm going to add a little bit more to the question because the question actually stopped there um, in this book, but I, I, I am going to add a little bit more to it. So it says that a rectangular block, and you, you need to take it down, a rectangular block has a base area of 25 centimeters um, square, right? It is submerged in water of density 1,000 kilograms meter cube. 
per meter cube rather. It says given that the gravitational field strength. So and guys, I want you to add information to your memory when you go along. Right? All along we have been talking about acceleration due to gravity. It is also known as the gravitational field strength. So please, when you see these things, guys, just just please document it and, 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 and know that it's, it's the same thing. So if you see something to say gravitational field strength somewhere else in life, we are actually talking about the acceleration due to gravity. You see what I say? Please, me, I beg you. Right? Just be, just be recognize that it's the same thing. Now, the question goes on to just say, you know, find the pressure. P1, due to the water acting on the top of the surface of the block. It says find the pressure P2 due to the water acting at, at, on the bottom surface of the, of the block. And it says calculate the force exerted, exerted by the water on the top of the, the surface of the block, also the bottom of the surface of the block. Right? So here we have all of that information. This is it. We have the height, height 1 that we can use to find the pressure one. We have height two that we can also use to find um, pressure two at the bottom. And from there, we can go ahead and find out what the forces are. Do you think that is hard, hard for us to do? It is broken down in pieces. Are we able to do that? Take down the question and Comprehend it for yourself. See what you have. See what information you have. See what you don't have and all of that. Put it together. And let's come up with the answer. All right, guys? Yeah, don't take long. Put that little question on the door. Oh, sorry. Don't take forever to sit on the one question, all right? Because when I have forever... The only time we'll have forever is when I go to, when I go to heaven, you know. But I want to know if you guys are seeing what we're doing here. So so far, you know, there are three three basic methods that we can use to find the options. So we all need to remember those, right? And the, the, the little experiments or the little experiments that, that I've been showing you guys, it's important for you to make note of those and see how it actually works because at the end of the day, when you go into the lab and carry out an experiment, right, using those devices and so forth, then you have to go do it. You know what I mean? So just be cognizant of the things right there and then, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody know that, know that song? <laughs> she's singing a good song. I mean, you know, she's really singing a good song, my bro. Yeah, man. Powerful song, man. As this, as this class finish, I'm going to play that song. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just resonating right now with me, you know.
What do you mean? Then I say, go, ha 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 ha. Yo, you want me to use that time? Yeah, man, of course. All right, think that. I would love, you know, I need to, I need to learn how to play the piano. Honestly, honest to God, because right now at church, you know, the whole lockdown and everything and all of that, um, you know, less persons have to go out to church. And I, I'm one of the musicians. I play the, I play the, the, the drum, but I mean, it's time now for me to really, you know, split my brain and split my mind so that my hands can coordinate and all of that to so you know can learn the, this whole thing and listening to the different sounds and you know <laughs> yeah you know and i mean i have I have more things that i need already it's just i know i can get a piano from somewhere my grandmother has a piano by the house so I have to go probably get that from her. Hopefully she 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 let it go. I may have may have I'm sorry though we can just hook up that to it and can get the projection of the song. But I'm actually a bass person as well, because so I, I need to go and buy a bass for myself and just play that, you know. I love music man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah man, I'm gonna invest in it man. Cause, I mean, if you learn, it never stop. You know, sometimes we're just lazy, <laughs> you know. And I can admit to that. Sometimes you're just lazy. You know, and you know, and learn. But learning can take place if you put your mind into it. So as much as how, as much as how hard um, physics is hard, we we if we put our mind to it, we can actually get it. You know, because there's not only one way of understanding. <laughs> of course. <laughs> You know, she's not a sugar coat it. I thought the truth. Like physics can be a hard subject, you know. But if you you know, if you make it in a sense where you know, you can you can accept the challenge. You know, if you're that type of person who accepts challenges then it it, it over time it, it won't be um so much of a of a difficult thing for you. You know what I mean? So it, it is subjective to the person because a lot of persons don't like a challenge. You see what I say? And you know, if 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 you can do physics, you know, you mean to say you can do anything else in life because um, physics comes with a lot of challenges, and life on a whole is is a challenge on a whole. So if you can manage it, then you mean to say you can manage other things. Don't worry, when you get to the key of level, then you'll see, you know, the scope of physics, right? And I know that there are persons here who are definitely going to do the key of at some point, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you see, it, it, it not necessarily might be hard, you know, it's just, it just requires for you to pull everything together. You understand? It's like building a house. You lay the foundation, and from there you go right up to, you know, the lintel and all of those things, you know, about house until you put on the roof and all of that. So it's just a continuous process, right, that you will see taking place when it comes down to physics. Because you learn this pressure thing now, and then when you move on further on, you're going to learn about some frictional drag force and all of those kind of things. Just add into what you, have, you would have learned already. I've less than a minute, so I'll restart it.
Are anybody coming up with an answer yet as it relates to the pressures? What you get for um for P P one? Yo, Rochester, you see, Reggie, you see when time, you know why you'll be too unsure when you have the things, Bridging. If you know the formula you yeah, use the correct thing, then be sure about your answer, man. That, that, that can run into problems sometimes, yeah, because you get the correct answer, you go to go change it, you know. You have to be confident in what you're doing, my friend. You understand? Right? The answer what you gave was correct. I just was listening out for the unit. What's the unit that, we're, what, that, that pressure is measured in? Yes, and it's what we call Pascal. So PA is representing Pascal. Right? And if you if you are also um paying attention, you could you could also write write the unit to say um Newton um per meter square. You could have also written it as that. So there's not one way of getting your mark. You understand? If you put it away, yeah, if other way you know it. You can get your marks so. up. If other way you know it, you can get your marks so. up. So there's not one way, guys. So the pressure one is height one times density times G. At the end of the day, when we do that, we are getting 500 pascals. P2 now. Exactly. We're so we're saying H2 times density times G, 700 pascals. What about now the force that is exerted by the water on the top of the... Eh? Ah, yeah, you might run into trouble though. I don't know, but you might run into trouble. But try it and see. Yeah, man, I want to learn to play the piano, man. I like, you know, yo, when you listen to some musician, I want to play it. I say, like, yo, it, 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 it's sick, you know, like, and I said, boy, you know, I said, I really want to play the instrument like that. I'll even the bass. So they hear some man, I actually, I play the bass. I say, you, you know, we have to, we have to admire, you know, persons, you know, and, and, and try to, 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 uh, your violin. You know, I must tell you guys this. When I was at BC, I I was in the orchestra, right? And my instrument, as a matter of fact, I did music in CXC, you know, and, 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 and pass it with, 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 with good, 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 good score. You know what I mean? My instrument at that time was a trombone. You know, I, I can play the trombone. I actually own a trombone. Not a professional trombone, but I actually own one. Right? So... I mean, music is 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 is, is fun, you know. It's 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 really fun. The reason why I chose music at the time was that I I never um like I was I was gonna do Spanish, but boy, when me when me check a stack, Spanish was like you know something I I I I couldn't relate to after 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 third form going into fourth form. I couldn't relate to it. And it was actually the, actually the Spanish teacher who encouraged me to go and do music because she observed that I was a part of the whole music club and, you know, playing music at school with, with the, you know, in, in devotion and all of that. So she said, yo, right, no, better you just go, 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 go do something where you, where you, where you think you, you'll get your marks in. And, and I looked at the line at the time, music was in the line and I did music. So it was a lovely experience, I can tell you that, you know, playing the trombone and playing along with the orchestra so you have you have violins playing you have flutes playing together you have the pianos playing together a little bit of drum um, playing together and the trumpet like when there were events at dc at times we were the one who would have played the national anthem using the those instruments and we had the opportunity to to go to even i can't remember the school name but i think it is I don't know if it's St. George's or some of that, 
right, our judges, judges, where we went there for an award ceremony, CXC award ceremony, and we were the honor guest, honor guest to, 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 to play the, the, the national anthem and also to do a, what we call it, um, an um, um, summer, um, summer, I believe that's what it is. It's just like a collection of different music, you know, that, I don't know if that's the term, right? But we, we, we did we did a little thing for ourselves, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. So music, as, as Amory said, music is life. But physics is also a life, too. Yeah. Oh, make a like you make a mistake. <laughs> But I tell you no, I tell you no. You see, you see. Yo, I tell you something. What you say? You're a joker right now. You see. Yo. Hey, let me tell you something. You see the world that we're living in now. <laughs> I wish I had a foreign language, another foreign language. Like I wish I had a foreign language where, cause I I I've traveled to 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 different countries. Well, not different countries, but to the U.S. mainly and. You you interact with with several you know nation of persons like persons from the Dominican Republic, persons from Spain, and you know when you when you get to to see them speaking the language, it, it's all really good that you want to learn how to speak it. So you know, you know, being on the work and travel program, I I have some good friends who are, who are living in the Dominican Republic, and you know throughout our daily um, work life, we would normally speak a little bit of Spanish now and then, you know, you know, and all of that. So. It was fun, you know. You... No man, no. They they can actually speak English, you know. But but you know while interacting because the program is a cultural exchange program. So while you're interacting with them, you're you're learning certain things, you know. <laughs> like you you will learn you will learn various words. You understand, right? Um, as you go along and 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 you know, right. I think I think if I remember, um, Jesus is is like talking about God. I don't know if that's that's how I pronounce it, right? You know, if somebody says I just kneel, that's that I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but like that's like oh my God, you know, right? Um, keloke, those kind of terminologies that they normally use. So you know, keloke, keloke, it just means what's up, what's up, right? So you're 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 just walking in the park and you see a Spanish to one of your friends says keloke, keloke, mi amigo. And he just go on with your business, you know. And and he said, tranquilo, tranquilo, right? Which just say, cool, cool, or, you know, I'm cool, right? So it, it was fun. It was fun, man. So, you know, if I, if I had done the Spanish, I probably would have been able to communicate more with those persons in their foreign language. And, of course, it would build my, 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 my speaking in the foreign language. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I mean, guys, yeah, go ahead. All right, all right, yeah. Mm hmm. Using 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 Spanish, right? Ah, exactly. So, <laughs> all right, all right, and and I must let you know, and and females don't feel any way, right? When it comes out to some of those 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 Spanish speaking uh, Latinos on uh, a whole, they, they they actually look good, you know what I mean? Like for for the most part, when you come here, I'm telling you, Latinos, they they are they are good looking, good looking. Um, <laughs> right um but yeah guys but you see I, I must let you know something as well because yo rochester you have to yo you know i learn no foreign language and this and that but yo right now you know bro when you go to university 
chances are you will you 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 probably will take up a, a foreign language, right? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, hear me. Yeah. No man, I don't. It 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 wouldn't be it wouldn't be so long. But 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 I want I want I want to show you guys something. You see, there are so many opportunities out there as it pertains to your education. And you see, you see, those opportunities come depending on the choices you make. Because you know that Cuba is one of the leading countries when it comes down to healthcare and medical, you know, medical training and all that kind of thing. But in order for you to get into the program, you have to know Spanish, right? And I must let you know that there are scholarships available to go to Cuba. That scholarship can... Can, can can offset a whole lot of expenses, you know, on, on, on your parents. So when you hear your mommy and daddy say, yo, take up a foreign language, you understand? Because they know. They might not know exactly the reason, but it could be God talking to them, telling them, say, yo, there could be a, a scholarship that is coming out that maybe is going to be in a, a French-speaking country where you could have jumped onto that, providing that you have the experience speaking the French or the Spanish, right? Also, I'm seeing where China is opening up their borders to, to a lot of persons. Because I know persons right now who went to the university at West Indies, finished their degree, and they're now in China working, like, with, and not do, using the actual degree that they went to university to, 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 to do. And of course, as you can imagine, they, they would need to communicate in, in the language. So when you see, we say, you know, take our foreign language or study Mandarin or, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's nothing to really kill you. You understand? It, it, it's for your own benefit at the end of the day because the climate that we're living in now, it is changing more rapidly than, than anything else. Climate these days are almost like weather. It's changing so fast, right? So don't limit yourself to one thing because scholarships will come, but the scholarships will require for you to go above and beyond. Because, I mean, scholarship, yo, when you check it out, if you want to really go study engineering and, and, and all of that, it takes money, you know. I don't know if you have ever looked at how much money it's going to cost you if you want to be an engineer at, at, at UA or, or, or UK. It's, 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 it's a significant amount of money. But, huh? La ya te lo
Well, I, I don't really know about the spoon feeding kind of thing because I went to the University of the West Indies and I and I really didn't get any spoon feeding, you know, right? I wish I had gotten a little bit of spoon feeding. I mean, life would be better. But, um, you see, I don't know, I don't know, right? Persons have their mixed feelings. I mean, yeah, of course, you don't have to be out, you don't have to study at the University of the West Indies, but it's it, 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 it's one of the better universities in Jamaica right now. You take is is. Well, UTEC program can be good in a sense, because if you, if you check it out, if, if I go to a UTEC person right now <laughs> and say, yo, you know, what, what's the rating between UTEC and UH? I'm going to tell you right now, UTEC is, 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 is not on, on, on the ball. So if we were comparing within Jamaica, right, then you would, you would, you would choose a UE over, over a UTEC because, one, most of UE um, programs are accredited. You understand? Not most, but all of their programs are accredited. So I'm saying, so that is what stands because the accreditation is what speaks volume. So if you go to another country, then you can use that accreditation. You can use your degree in another foreign country and all of that. But with a UTEC, no, a UTEC degree can probably just only work in Jamaica if you don't know what you're really doing, right? Well, mind you, can you can make significant amount of money by studying at the UTEC. Just, just, just letting you know that. If you go and study chemical engineering and you know, electrical engineering and those things, mechanical engineering, then yeah, you, 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 your income is sure, you understand, providing that there are jobs in Jamaica to fill that. But what if there are no jobs? I know persons right now who finished chemical engineering and there's no job there for them really right now. You understand? So, yeah, let's get back to pressure. All right. So we want to find a force that is exerted by the water. What's the answer we're getting for this one at the top of the fluid? Yeah, yes. Go ahead. All right. And and yeah, I see I see your line of thinking. Right? So yes guys, you would have to convert this um era into meter square right let's just look at it in terms of converting it because it can be tricky when we talk about centimeter squared it's the same thing as saying centimeter multiplied by centimeter can we agree yes all right i believe you i believe you guys agree no what does centi mean? Centi means 10 to the minus 2, right? So if, 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 if centi means 10 to the minus 2, and I'm, multi and I'm multiplying 10 to the minus 2 times 10 to the minus 2, what are we going to do to the power? Hmm? Add. Add, so we get we get ten to the minus four meter square. So at the end of the day, centimeter square is equal to ten to the minus four meter square. So when we go now and say, all right, force force one is equal to pressure one times area. We know the pressure already is five hundred. Five hundred times twenty five. Wherever we see centimeter square, we're going to replace it with 10 to the minus 4. So we're saying times 10 to the minus 4 meter square. All right. So at the end of the day, when we do this, we're saying 500 times 25 times 10 to the minus 4 newton. So times that up and tell me what you're getting. Sir, I don't understand the formula and the answer. I don't understand. What do you mean you don't understand the formula? What formula you don't understand? Oh, 
What time class in by the way? Next two minutes, right? Short. It's on a class, man. Um, Murray, we're just finding the, the, the force, right? Remember that pressure is equal to force divided by area. So if I want to find the force, I just transpose. So force is going to equal to pressure times area. We know the pressure at the top, which you'll have calculated up here. We know the area, right? So having said that, I can find out what the uh, what the force is. Anybody had confirmed what the answer is? The answer here is, yeah, man. So it's going to be 1.25 Newton, right? And I believe when we go ahead and... Oh, you, what, what's the different way you did it? All right, you don't have to tell me, but um, once you get the answer though, and you know, it makes sense, then you can use that method. If we want to find F2, we do the same thing. Pressure is 700 times 25 times 10 to the minus four. Yeah, go ahead. What 0 0.05 you times it by? I don't understand. Where did that 0 0.05 come from? Well, 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 at the end of the day, um, you mean, I'm not too sure about that one there, working out there, because you have to come to this point of using the formula while you might be coincident so what what is f2 now based on what you told me what what would have been f2 what is, you get 1.75 yeah you see it happened by chance, in a sense. It happened by chance. So, by the skin of your teeth, you got away. Um, somebody was asking what, what was the um, B, B, I. B, I is this. F1 is, is this. 1.25. So, the finishing touch of this question now was to just find the obtrus. So, the obtrus is going to be F2 minus F1. So, when we do the subtraction, 1.75 minus um, 1.25, we get 0 0.5. By the way, you guys have a class after this? You teach us what? All right. Anyway, take care of yourself. We, 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 we'll pick up on this part. Um, this part. But a good conversation still, you know? Um, so we'll, we'll continue um, next week. All right, blessings. Yeah, man, a little bit. Yeah, man. Yeah, so sir, yeah, Shamari, yeah. Um, yeah, B is 1.75. Um, yeah, man. All right, take care. Yes, Aaron. So that's the answer for B. For um, uh, B I I. All right. Yeah, man. Take care.